Um, I just want to thank you all for being here today. This is a kind of the culmination of an incredibly challenging process to get the Mavericks Challenge up and running, fully permitted, and here beyond the cusp of tomorrow's opening ceremonies. And as part of that, to really take a leadership role in spreading big wave safety um, throughout the world, really, and specifically through this event, to do what we can to embrace the, the women's participation in this Mavericks Challenge event, and to focus on uh, uh, having the safety component of it being as strong as we can. And so to have the, the um, big wave risk management or risk assessment group here with us today to teach their knowledge, share their information. Uh, as, as Brian said at the, the Bill Vaughn Odyssey training, which was over 17 years ago, which was one of the, the um, first real organized programs of, of this fashion, he said that the Riding the big waves is easy, it's surviving them is hard. And so to have Brian and Daniel and the rest of the team here is just a fantastic honor and a, a huge opportunity. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the, the team here. They're going to have a video to uh, sort of set the tone. Recently, kind of stepped into the role here as one of the instructors at this lab, of course, after attending uh, many of them since their inception. With Paul, Brian, uh, Pat, and Daniel. So grateful to be here again uh, to pass on the knowledge with you guys. But as I am sitting here as an instructor every single day, I also see myself as more of a student, and that uh, it's an imperfect part, and we're always learning. Uh, and evolving after every single big wave season, after every uh, big wave session. So uh, with that, we're going to take a quick look at one of the most monumental big wave sessions. Uh, Bill, go to the next slide. How many people recognize this photo? Everybody. Aaron Wold, world record setting wave, the one that made everybody's jaw drop. The new ceiling phase, world record 68 feet. Everybody remembers he got bulldozed at the bottom by a towering wall of white water like nobody had seen. He came up, no problem, took two more waves on the head, washed it in the channel, didn't even inflate his wetsuit. Wow. How is that possible, right? 68 feet. Fast forward, no more than a couple months later, uh, swell in Fiji. Before the main peak of the swell had even hit Aaron Paddle off the boat, and went surfing as he had done thousands of times before. Yeah, one more time.
they had a big crew, like, you know, going back to that band of brothers, you know, like having Healy and Greg Long, and then Hippo was there, um, Billy Kemper, you know, those guys, they all were able to work on him and bring him back to life, and, uh, you know, and that's a perfect example of, you know, like, the guys having to each other's back, you know. It's, it's, it was just, uh, it was amazing watching Mark and Hippo and, and Greg just kicking a gear. I was blown away. I was like, that's like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. That was an and, and it just became yeah. that moment. It was a miracle you walked away from it, you know. It's just, uh, you know, it's, I have so much respect for Greg and Mark and the rest of the crew on that boat that really brought him back to life. It was just, uh, I mean, they saved his life. It was crazy. I went down the normal. It wasn't some gnarly, like, oh, no, I got completely pounded or anything. It, I thought I was going to be hit the bottom because it kind of cycled down with the wave after it kind of pushed me down. And um, it was fine me, but I was coming up, and I got about two to three feet below the surface, and I got to the tail of my board, and I'm like, okay, I'm right here, right below it. And I knew the timing already. It had been down long enough to have enough two-way fall downs. But the next thing you know, the wave hit me and washed, and that was like right about at that point, that little wash through, and it was like lights out. When I came to, I came to on the boat, and um, I knew right where I was and right what happened in the whole thing. It wasn't like there was any cloudiness or like, oh, what just went down? I knew that that, that had happened. I heard the words, man down. I didn't think twice, I just went straight into the lineup. The board was just lying on the surface, a lot of water moving, just, just cruising along. And don't ask me why you want to just, you know, get off your ski and jump into the water when you've got a, you know, a mountain coming down on you. Um, and then as I, as I jumped in the water and I landed on a body and that body as I pulled up to the surface happened to be to be Aaron when his head turned around and his eyes would roll back and, and foam at the mouth. I come from the military and you, you know, let, never leave a man behind, right? That situation, the way that it happened, I think I have no doubt, 100% in my mind, that that was supposed to happen that way for a reason. The way that the rescue went down and all that stuff, it was all tied there for a reason, you know, and, um, you know, it wasn't my time and, and I know that and, um, I'm thankful that um, I was there and had those friends. And you always do the training, regardless of how much you think about it. You still think that it's to be there to help somebody else, but it's it's a humbling experience to be on the other side of it, and and to really understand the value of it, you know, is is something super special. And I, I understand it now. You know, I really see it, and it was a crazy situation to go through. The one lesson that everyone will take away, and especially Aaron, is that you just you need to have flotation. Now, if his leg rope had have uh, snapped, you know, we, we wouldn't be having this conversation about him surviving, you know, which is which is a scary thought. Uh, Vinny mentioned that it's a band of brothers out there, but it's a band of brothers and sisters now. Uh, so welcome, ladies, to uh, the Mavericks Invitational and for what will certainly be the best big wave tour yet this year. Uh, there was also a lot of praise for how everything uh, went well in that situation. And it did. Aaron was able to walk away from it. But I'd also like to point out, more importantly, uh, all of the things that could have been done better to prevent that situation from ever happening in the first place. And that's essentially what this whole course is about and what big wave risk management is about. Uh, and for that, uh, we have the honor and privilege of having the forefather, who was basically established from the very beginning um, and setting the precedent of ocean water safety here to join us. Um, and Danilo as well, who's been spearheading this entire movement. It's not a perfect uh, science, as I mentioned before, and it's constantly evolving every single session. Everybody who's here today, as we're all learning from each other, is also a teacher, so we're opening it up for uh, sharing stories, personal experiences, especially those who've spent their life out here in the water um, from a specifically a, a medical background or a boating background. Uh, everybody's uh, information, wisdom is more than welcome to be shared uh, throughout the course of it. Uh, and Bill, next photo, please. I'd also like to just reiterate how important all this actually is. Uh, and that's me, 2012 Cortez Bank. 
my first wave of the session. I wiped out on this one, came up, laughing, went back out. Uh, it was two waves later. This is where I end up. And so uh, a lot of these techniques, water safety pickups, we'll be going over tomorrow. Uh, and this isn't just stuff that we're kind of winging. It's proven, the techniques, uh, years and years of training and experience. Uh, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for implementing a lot of the knowledge that passed on to me from uh, my father, who was a lifeguard, the earliest drag uh, courses, and those who sat through the training. Uh, Frank, who's here today, is on the seat right there, was by my side if anything went wrong. So, um, with that, I'd like to introduce Danilo. We're going to get into the nuts and bolts of big wave risk management with you guys.